I don't care what's going on. I want to go back to the story of that big, powerful union trying to muscle him into signing a neutrality agreement, which is a nice phrase for unconditional surrender uh, of your the business that you've built up into a major, major... I'm Barry Barber, Sarah Pence, my co-host on my flanker microphone, Dave Bago. He always reminds me of Mark Twain's great line, uh, fear knocked at the door, faith answered, no one was there. Well, fear in this case uh, was the Service Employees International Union, a big, formidable, brass knuckle, aggressive uh, union, whose leader, Andy Stern, last time we checked, was the number one visitor uh, uh, in frequency to Obama's White House. Uh, They tried to make Dave buckle under, sign the so-called neutrality agreement. Dave resisted, and the story is between covers of his book, The Devil at My Doorstep. But Uh, what I love about it is the the reason his employees resisted is obviously, obviously, because he treated them well, paid them well, had a good company, and they loved him. Mm-hmm. That's got to be the the solution to keeping your employees from bolting the door. That's the greatest anti-union tactic in history. Yes, Just absolutely. Give the workers a better deal than the union would know how to ask for. Anyhow, the, the devil doesn't need much time to rest <laughs> in between rounds. Now, a lot of books have a chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, Dave Bago's story may have book one, book two, book three, because they're not through yet. Uh, Dave, I remember Senator Tom Harkin uh, of uh, uh, Iowa promising us that card check was going to go through. It's the same Tom Harkin who promised us he was going to win the Democratic presidential nomination one of the years that Bill Clinton won it. Um, is there a chance that this nation is going to see card check the end of the secret ballot? Well, as I said, no, legislatively, no. Regulation-wise, through the National Labor Relations Board, possibly if our legislators don't wake up. Now, I will say that um, the, um, the Republican House uh, had a meeting with the National Labor Relations on the National Labor Relations Board last Friday. And they're starting to investigate all these uh, changes that uh, Craig Becker and Mark Pierce and Wilma Liebman are trying to make. And uh, they're they're starting to put the spotlight on them. But if they don't, if they get some of these things changed, and and, and we're already seeing it, because like I say, the the truth is is that um, the unions need members and uh, the politicians they support need money. And uh, they're trying desperately to increase their coffers before the 2012 election. And, um, you know, we, we've seen things like, um, I don't know if you heard about this one, but here a couple of weeks ago the unions came out and said that, uh, you know, they should be able to operate on company property, come into the offices or come onto the uh, retail stores and solicit uh, people to be members of the union during working hours and um, use um, – uh, the company's computer system to ah. broadcast and everything. And, and the reason they believe this, because they say, well, it's not fair because they can't do it, but the Girl Scouts can. <laughs> they can come in and sell Girl Scout cookies. Well, tell them to go bake some cookies. That's, mm. But that's how these people I know. Think. And this is how they, they rationalize and justify things. And and it's really sad. And um, it's it, it's a situation where... Uh, we have to wake up before it's too late. Because I can tell you, in the past two weeks, um, I've had more calls from people. Um, a guy that uh, runs our health care insurance for our company called me last week, and he says, um, can I come over and get 10 of your books? I have a customer who owns nursing homes in Indiana, and they're being attacked by the SEIU like you were. Uh, oh um, I, I got a call from some people in Florida. You know, we do business in Florida. And they knew about me, and they said, our hospital is being attacked by the SEIU. Oh. Um, can you give us some input? Um, and then in the Wall Street Journal the other day, Chris Mayer came out with an article that uh, the SEIU is planning to step up their campaigns against, um, you know, uh, 
service companies, um, banks, um, hospitals, you know, uh, here in the next few months, um, because bottom line, they need money. And uh, so we're going to see a big increase, plus they're emboldened by the fact that uh, they know the NLRB has got their back. And uh, they're just, you know, they think they can go out there and do what they want to do. If the Republicans wake up to the idea that if this happens and they get more money to the Obama campaign, they may have trouble in 2012, that might help a little bit, don't you think? Well, I do. And, and, you know, I've been trying, like here in Indiana, I've been trying to push for a right-to-work law, which, you know, basically lets people opt out even if they're in a union situation. But it's hard to get even government officials to understand that. Um, by the way, uh, the, the book on, on the broadcast table uh, that your friend wanted ten copies of uh, in a hurry uh, is The Devil at My Doorstep. Devil at My Doorstep by our partner for the expedition, Dave Bago, the man who built the executive management services company. I'm Barry Farber, Sarah Pence on my flanker microphone, Dave Bago. And, Dave, it's very important uh, that we get this correct. Uh, my understanding of your book title is Devil at My Doorstep. Is it Devil or The Devil at My Doorstep? No, the book is The Devil at My Doorstep. Okay, The Devil at My Doorstep by Dave Bago, B-E-G-O. Um, if there's any unfinished business uh, from the previous segment, I invite you to begin your answer to my next question with that. But I wanted to change the subject over to something that came in today from a man I really wish I could introduce you to in person. His name is Paul Holra, H-O-L-L-R-A-H. And he's a writer and a columnist and a real gutsy guy like you. He introduced the secret ballot, not uh, any union thing, but the secret ballot to the state of Oklahoma, where most of the counties did not have a secret ballot. There was a Democrat at the table, and there was a nominal Republican who was really a Democrat sitting beside him, uh, and you had to fill out your ballot right there. He got death threats. uh, He follows the labor scene uh, very assiduously, and Dave Bago sent us an email today pointing out that the public sector salaries... Paul, Paul did. Yeah, Paul did. Yeah. Paul, you said Dave Bingham. I'm sorry. Um, uh, the, uh, the, these two men have so much in common. I know, common, they have... I'm not even going to count that as a, <laughs> as a slip. So Paul Holrus... Paul Holrus sent us... Um, I'll just read the uh, prefatory paragraph. Recent reports tell us that public sector salaries are roughly double. Now, let me interrupt myself. I think I told you, Sarah that my mother explained to me in junior high school that if I were to go into business like daddy, I might make a lot of money, but I might go broke. If I were to work for the government, I would not have the chance to make that much money, but I would have tenure security. That has been turned on its head. Not only are the salaries in the the public sector uh, equal, not only are they higher, they are double, and it's the work of the union. Dave, how can the union pull this off? These are public employee unions. How can they pull it off when their numbers uh, in the labor movement are dwindling? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you, you said I could mention a couple of things real quick. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd like to do that. Um, uh, one thing on the neutrality agreement, if people want to see what a neutrality agreement looks like, you can go on my blog site, which is devil at my doorstep dot wordpress dot com, and uh, pull up um, some of my blogs. Many of them have it embedded in there. One is card check through regulation, and one is the the uh, beware of the rogue NLRB, and where it shows neutrality agreement in in blue letters, you can click on it. And you can get a copy of what a neutrality agreement looks like. And um, I encourage people to do that. Um, the second thing is, uh, Sarah, you were asking me about uh, other things that the, the union was overturning. And one that I found very interesting, if you look at the front cover of my book, down at the bottom of it, it says there's a, there's a banner that the union 
is uh, displaying, and that was in downtown Indianapolis, and it says shame on, and then in the letters below you can't see very well, is shame on EMS, my company. Oh, wow. Um, just recently, uh, Becker and his people reversed decisions that those banners are co- coercive, and, and it says now they are they are acceptable, and unions can use them to intimidate employers and their customers. They can use them in advertising? They can use them anywhere. Oh my gosh, that 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 can't no. be. That can't be. That that's that's got to be illegal. No, no. And these are the things that are happening out there. And uh, now to answer your question, yeah. it's very simple. You know, I've, I've been involved a little bit in stuff in California. I was actually supposed to speak out there a while back and, and couldn't make it. But uh, I'm, I'm a contributing uh, columnist to a, a group called Union Watch and. Um, uh, so I, I've gotten kind of in this in very detail. And, and, and what's really interesting about it, in California especially, and, uh, you know, New York's got the problem, Illinois and, and some states like that, is that you're right that um, uh, most of the public employees are making double what um, private employees doing the same job are making. What's even worse, though, is, is like in California, you have uh, police officers and firefighters that are retiring at the age of 50 after only 20 years on the job and um, at 100000 or more a year. And then they go on and, and pick up another job in the public sector and add to that. Oh, oh, public or private sector? Public. Public? Yep. It's absolutely incredible. Um, but here's why all this can happen is because... It, Especially in these areas that are very liberal, the um, the unions. If uh, you know, of course, the government years ago and Kennedy started all this when he signed an executive order that said that uh, public employees could be unionized. Um, but they go in, and, and um, most of the politicians are liberal anyway, and a lot of them are somehow connected to the unions. So when the unions are sitting down to negotiate contracts with the politicians, the elected politicians, most of them, they're in bed together anyway. So they sit down and they, they, you know, negotiate the best terms they can for themselves and the employees. And uh, it, it's really a racket, and it's really sad. Now, wait a minute. I'm confused here. Just a second. Step back a second. So it is the politicians and the union employees who are in bed with each other. Is that what you're saying? Well, absolutely. I mean, okay, I understand that. I just thought I, I just thought I didn't hear you correctly. Yeah. Absolutely. The reason they're in bed is that they get money from the employees union, right? Well, not only that, a lot of the politicians are union employees. Ah, yay. Yeah, that's what people don't understand. They're union employees, and they're negotiating contracts for the government with the union. You know, I'm, I'm sort of speechless. I'm, well, yeah, there's, there's an awful lot to that, get speechless that, that about. That kind of information, I, I guess I went right over my head. I didn't understand that. But if that's well, the, most, yeah, there go are ahead. most people don't. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, are they still playing that little trick where uh, your pension is based on your last year's salary uh, and uh, but your buddies will help you get in a lot of overtime in your Absolutely. last year? Absolutely. Oh, wow. oh, oh, oh. Well, when we get back together, this couldn't come at a better time than on the day the president lays his new budget upon us. I'm not only b- blood boiling at the Democrats in the White House. I think the Republicans are completely unaware of what I'm about to inject into the argument. Uh, thanks to Dave Bago's reminding me of it. We'll be right to my co-host on my plane.